Hi everyone. Oh. It's Rita from Miss Rita to the Rescue. Happy date night. Happy cricket date night. I'm so excited. I was waiting with bated breath all day to have this video. I'm going to have to review my schedule because I don't know if I can wait all day until until Saturday night, but I suppose that's the fun part about date night. There's that anticipation. Um, I figured I'd start a few minutes early just to give people some time to find the video and log in and maybe say hello um, and hear where people are are tuning in from. Um, hi, Carol Ann. That's a pretty name with a K. Uh, that's great. Uh, so my name is Rita. If you've, if you've never come to one of my videos before, my name is Rita and this is my page, Miss Rita to the Rescue. I'm a Cricut product expert. I've been uh, a Cricut product expert since 2014. Um, and I've been working with a Cricut. Hello, Lori Jo. Hello, Dawn. Um, I've been working with Cricut for well, since I think it's 2012. So I'm not that terribly old, but I'm not that new to it either. Um, let's see, just a few things about me. My, um, let's see, I was born and raised in Massachusetts and I live now north of the city, um, north of Boston by about 20 miles in a, in a big city named Peabody. Massachusetts. So hello from Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Oh, New Brunswick. Hi, Dawn. New Brunswick, Canada. Um, lovely. So uh, I live in uh, Massachusetts now. I um, live with my son who's 14 um, and I have uh, a whole house full of animals. I'm a corgi lover. I've been a corgi lover for many, many years, and also I raise guinea pigs. That's a new thing. Um, so my life is very, very full. But uh, hi, Emmy. <laughs> hi, Judite. Oh, what a pretty name. Hi. So my life's really, really full. And then about, you know, and I've been a blogger for oh, I don't know, five, six years now, um, where mostly I did writing and I didn't really do a lot of video. Um, I kind of thought I was too old for it. <laughs> um, but uh, last year I was kind of nudged along uh, to try video and it's been up and down, you know, learning the tricks and sometimes the video doesn't record right. And um, so, but we have a YouTube channel that has a couple hundred videos of all these wonderful projects with Cricut. My passion, my interest is with paper crafting. I just love to craft with paper. Um, I understand and I appreciate that the Cricut does all kinds of things like vinyl and iron-on and fusible ink and, and even fabric and all of that stuff. And um, I love those things, but really my passion has been paper. Um, and I'm primarily a, a, a card maker. I like to make cards, but one of the things that I really, really like is 3D, doing 3D things. Um, and so some of the cards that I create are, um, they're, they're sort of movement cards. They're not what you'd consider typical cards. They're not flat, although they do fold flat. And this is a box card we made this earlier in the week. Um, and so the, um, these are not my designs. I don't design, uh, oh, great, Lisa. So, and this is, yep, Dreaming Tree and SVG Cuts. They're not my designs. There are some really, really talented people out there that design SVGs. And, um, oh, wonderful, Emmy. Glad you're learning 
so much. I'm so happy. I really am because really my only goal in life is to is to teach teach people things and it's just always been that way. And um so I love to just sort of devour everyone's creativity and sort of be able to explain in a way that everyone gets it because I believe that creativity is something we're all given. I you know, I sometimes I get a little irritated when people say, oh, "I'm just not at all creative." And that's just simply not true. They might be um, creative uh, in a different way than than what I am creative, but they're still creative. Maybe they do it in the kitchen when they're cooking, or maybe they work on machinery and there there's a, de a great deal of creativity, you know, or coding or writing or painting. It doesn't have to be a traditional creative venue. So um, that's how I approach everything uh, in life. And that's especially how I approach things with the cricket. Um, I have wonderful uh, group of people that I work with um, at Cricut and also other people um, that are have the same title as me, product expert, and uh, they present their own brand of what they do with the Cricut. And that's what's so beautiful about a Cricut is that it's it's a machine <laughs> but you know it it allows for creativity on so many different levels i've seen particularly in the last month so many people doing a lot of sewing i love to sew too um but there's a lot of people sewing lately making masks but there are people also that love vinyl they love to do iron on and i love to do all that stuff too but i always end up coming back to paper hold on just a sec I forgot I left my music on while I was preparing. Okay, um, so I always come back to paper, and um, one of the things that I really, really love is the 3D stuff. So tonight we're going to be, hey, Mally Mel, hi. Oh, hi, Susan. So many great people that we've known. So if you, if you are just new to our channel, if that's what you wanna call it, um, Miss Rita to the Rescue has been around for a few years, and uh, but I'm just sort of new to uh, videos by about a year. And uh, when the Joy launched, which was right before Valentine's Day, when the Joy launched, I started playing with the Joy in my kitchen. Um, I have this beautiful craft room. But I was like, you know, I'm going to bring this in the kitchen with me because I had work to do. Um, I, I've been home uh, with my son since he was born. So he's now 14. So I haven't had a traditional office job for about 15 years. And um, so I was like, you know, I don't want to be stuck in my craft room because I have cooking to do. I have cleaning and all of that. Um, so I started playing around and I started doing morning chats. Um, and I found an audience there. Um, oh, great. I'm so glad. Cynthia, yay. I went right before I started this video, I went online to YouTube and explained that we're going to have this tonight. Um, so if you're here from YouTube, tell me yay. Um, and we do have Cynthia. Um, and uh, so anyway, so I started doing this morning chat, um, which was kind of fun. And, and I found out that there are some people like me that, you know, in the mornings, they're not weren't running off to jobs and, and, or, you know, maybe they worked later in the day or whatever the case may be. And again, I'm on the East coast. So I was doing these around eight o'clock in the morning. And so for some people it was really early, like five and, um, Yay, Alicia. Alicia's new from, from YouTube. Wonderful. We'll hear from YouTube. Um, so, uh, so we started doing that and then the pandemic hit and I started thinking, gee, you know, what am I going to do? How am I going to keep my spirits up and everybody's spirits up? And so we just started doing these morning every day, uh, these morning videos live. So just this week, we decided as a group, we decided that we were going to, um, 
we were going to have a set time that we were going to do, um, oh, Emmy's got a, hi, Carolyn. I was so glad you made it. Um, so anyway, we were, we were, uh, decided that every morning, uh, at least during the week, Monday through Friday at nine o'clock, this is it nine o'clock. Yeah. Nine o'clock. Right. Um, we're going to be doing live videos here on Facebook and you can pop in. It'll be about, you know, somewhere between 30 minutes for 30, 45 minutes. Hi, Carolyn. Shelly. Hi, Shelly. Hi, Lisa. Queens, New York. Yes. Yes, I am good. I'm good. Thank you. So nice to hear from you, Lisa. And Patricia, good evening. Oh, I'm so happy to have so many wonderful people. So so I realize, you know, nowadays, everybody's home, you know, or ugh, most people, you know, I know some people don't have that luxury. But, you know, a lot of people are home. They're looking for things to do. And I was sitting there thinking, what could I do? How do I start my day off with a real bang? So we started doing these videos and um, we have a really nice audience there. But one of the things that I missed was that the evening times. So I just decided that we're going to set aside some time on Saturday nights to do um, to do this cricket date night because you know oh, life is so difficult right now with everybody being home. We're not running out to ball games and you know concerts and and movies and what have you. Hi Sharon and Terry. Oh, wonderful to hear that Terry's brand new and to Cricket. Hi, Teresa. I'm glad you made it. Yay. Oh, you set your alarm. What's wonderful. So um, so we th I thought, you know, let's establish a routine. So we have a Monday through Friday at 9 o'clock on my channel. We have coffee and Cricket chat. Um, and then on Saturday nights, we're going to do a bigger project um, and that might take a little more time. So this project that we picked today, or I picked, actually somebody picked it for me. It might be Teresa that picked it for me. Um, hi, Lynn from Northern Virginia. Oh, good. I'm glad there are paper crafters out there. You know, I think that's one of the things that the joy really sort of awakened in people um, is this love for making cards and for paper crafting. And I think that might have been a little bit of a surprise for the Cricut folks. I think they were thinking it was going to be all about um, vinyl, uh, you know, which it, it's great with vinyl and those extra long cuts and everything. But it's also really fun, very personal um, machine. I have all of the machines. I do not choose between them. Um, so I will never not work with any machine. I just love everything Cricut. Um, I, I think every machine has its benefits and their, its purpose. I have Maker, I have Explore, actually I have every single Explore that's ever come out. Um, and then of course we had the Joy, the Easy Presses. And, and so, I mean, I just love everything Cricut. Um, I realize that there are other brands out there, but for me, um, the Cricut is the best of all of them simply just because uh, the customer service at, at Cricut has been, you know, just so exemplary. And um, so I, I'm, I'm very much an advocate for Cricut. So there are other machines. I cannot answer the questions about those machines. So I apologize. Um, and there are other people that do understand that better than I do. So I would rather have them do that. But if you have questions about Cricut, that's why I'm here. And I'm happy to help. So if you're watching this after the fact, um, either on YouTube or on the repeat or the rebroadcast, um, you can always either message me on Facebook or you can uh, send me an email at Rita to the rescue at gmail.com. Okay. Um, oh, wonderful. And, and I was going to just say, Emily, I was just going to say, I would really love it if you subscribed to my YouTube channel. It's all about the numbers. I am, you know, I am very low key about, well, w you know, w there's some people that have hundreds of thousands of followers, you know, frankly, 
I'm just happy that there, there are, you know, people that talk to me. <laughs> so, so, um, it would be great to, you know, have more people and all of that, but I just would rather just, you know, have my little groups that I love, um, that I love to uh, just kind of chit chat with and talk about cricket. It just feels like you guys are my tribe, you know, and, and that's what, you know, I just love just kind of relating to you in that way. So anyway, let's get started. So we're going to be making this hydrangea tray and it is from a designer uh, a company called Dreaming Tree. I have it here on my laptop. I'm going to move it over just so you can see a little bit. So it is a file that you have to pay for. It's cost $3, $2.99. And I'm not going to go through the whole process, but just so that you know, you'd go to their website, which is 3dsvg.com. You'd find this file, which you can use a search and you can type in hydrangea. Um, and it, this will come up. You add it to your cart and you process it like an order. Once you've paid for it, it's yours forever. And you can download it to what Ever device your computer your iPad your you know whatever your laptop you you download it and then you bring it up into Cricut design space okay and there is a little bit of work in bringing all those files there um, and you know it, it, it's it's a whole thing about uploading images I'm happy to show you that I do show that to people all the time but um, but I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that tonight because I really just want to talk about assembly of this. But so anyway, this is my um, 3D SVG hydrangea pot with tray file. Um, this is a very big file. Usually with Dreaming Tree, they just have a they have really big files, okay? Um, and so it can get a little overwhelming when you get it. And so when I first started making this project, and I've been making it for a couple years now, actually, I um, I didn't do the tray. Like I did the tray at first, and this is um, the tray. I just put it together before. I came on tonight, but, um, it's really cute, but, um, I was like, ah, you know, dealing with the tray and putting it together was, it was just so overwhelming for me. So what I focused on was this, which is the, the pot. Um, and it, it's actually just like a paper pot with a half of a styrofoam, uh, ball that I cut in half that I've decorated and, and affixed to the top. There's It's hollow inside. You can put something in there if you're going to, for instance, be putting this in a windowsill and you don't want it to fall over because it's a slightly top heavy. Okay. So to do this project, you need paper or cardstock. Um, mostly it's going to be solid colors. And the great thing about Let's close this. The great thing about um, the folks over at Dreaming Tree is that they give you this, which is an SVG um, PDF. It's a PDF, sorry, it's not SVG. And this is a PDF, and it basically will tell you all of the different cutouts that you're going to be making with this whole, uh, with this whole project. And what on the front page it tells you is the number of sheets of paper you need and anything else that you might need to put the project together. So this is really important, even if you don't print it out, to refer to um, when you're making a project from a designer such as Dreaming Tree. So you'll note here that this project, it is big. It requires um, five sheets of white cardstock. These are all 12 by 12 inch sheets. Um, a sheet of bubble gum, which is, you know, pink, a lagoon, lavender, a sheet of spinach, which is green. Um, and then two sheets of patterned paper. Um, and then a, an alternate or a coordinating um, patterned paper, one sheet of that, and then some gold foil paper. You also are going to need styrofoam balls that are three inches. You really, for this project, you just need two of them. Um, here, 
are two. And what I did before coming on is I just took my knife, um, my serrated blade, my Cutco knife <laughs> in the kitchen, and I just sort of, you know, and cut it in half. And you could kind of, you know, soften this like this edge is not I didn't do a very good job in this but this one's better um, it's up to you how you do that also there's no real um, need for this kind of styrofoam because styrofoam comes in that it's almost like spongy looking or this which is like a smooth there, there really is no difference these just happen to be the ones that I picked up these are available obviously online um, and I also purchased these at Michael's, I believe. So we need two of them. We actually only need one and a half, but you need two to, to do this project. You're also going to need this, which um, these are pins, pearl headed pins. Let me get close so you can see. They're pearl headed pins. I did get these at Amazon. I'm happy to post a link, but you can also find them in, in a dress shop like, you know, Joann's or whatever. And you're going to need for each of the pots, I think you need 30, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 24, yeah, 30, 30 or 31 um, uh, pins. So you're going to need a total of 100 pins. Um, this one happens to be an awful lot of pins uh, just because I bought them in quantity. Um, so in addition to the, to the ball, you're going to need the pins. You're going to need some glue. I'll tell you, um, I use this glue. You do not need to use this glue. Any liquid glue would be fine. Um, I am a big proponent of liquid glue. I do not like, uh, hot glue guns or glue sticks. I'm just not fan, a fan. I have tried just every adhesive on the market. Someone turned me on to this one, which is called Art Glitter Glue. It's available um, online at Amazon, or um, I buy mine from createforless.com. It's really nice because it dries clear. It's got a good tack a good like you know adherence um and i like the the tip i like the tip of it it's very you know fine you can actually even make it even finer but you don't have to use this kind scotch has a great brand out um 3m well i think that's scotch um tombow i think has a brand out there's all kind of ad tech so don't feel compelled I would probably steer away from Elmer's unless it was specifically for paper. When I use glue, I don't use a whole lot of glue. And you're going to see that when we put these things together. Um, it's better to use the least amount of glue and then go back and have to re-glue little pieces than to have too much glue. It gets messy, it gets all over your hands, and then you end up ruining the project. Also, it causes warping in the paper. Um, so let's start off with uh, doing the pot itself. So this is a great little pot. It's made of paper, right? And it's decorated with these panels. This is actually paper that I got from one of the mystery boxes. I think it's Anna Griffin paper. And then it also has this, you know, M for mom. You don't need to, uh, oh, here comes my son in from his walk. Um, you don't need to, hi, hi, you don't need to do the mom if you want to just make this for yourself. Um, and I, it's really simple to, to eliminate that, but I thought, you know, it's getting close to Mother's Day. So, um, so I, I put it on there and then it has this little base. And this is kind of the trick of the eye is that the, the flower lays on top of here. Okay. So let's put this together. Um, so here is what it looks like. Actually, here is what it looks like undecorated. And you're going to fold it at all these, these um, dashed cut lines. Now, um, this is not a score line. I will refer to it as a score line, but it's a dashed cut. And that's because designers have to use a dashed cut instead of the scoring wheel or the scoring stylus. Um, that actually works to your benefit because then you can use files that are SVGs on the Joy because the Joy doesn't have scoring. Um, and so using, I 
outside SVGs works just fine on the Joy. So you're gonna fold it all at these dash cut lines and then you're going to put glue right here on this tab. All right. And note, I do not put a whole lot of glue. I'll make sure I try to get this in, in uh, view. So you're gonna fold it in half and then you tuck in the the tab let me move this here whoop finger in the way sorry here we go here we go okay ah okay so fold it here and then you tuck in the tab and you see what i'm doing here i want to make sure that this this um box is squared off so i'm doing it on a flat surface right so that way when i open it up it opens the same way either way, okay? So that's the benefit of that. I know there's like kind of a, you know, oh, I'm gonna do it close up to my face, but um, get used to working on a flat surface. It really is to your benefit. So once you have that um, there, and you will decorate these boxes ahead of time. Is it? Okay, good, I'm glad. Okay, um, so, so once you have the box closed up, and by the way, you can put the little decorative panels on ahead of time, and I would recommend that you do that. Um, so you have that all decorated, and then you're going to flip the box over, and you're gonna put glue on these three tabs here. And again, just a little bit, not a whole lot. If you have to come back and put some more there, that's okay. You know, um, that is perfectly fine. Now, when you're holding the this part, this is the, the little hatch door here. When you're holding that onto the glued part, make sure it's squared off. Just use your fingers, make sure it's squared off, okay? Because you want it to be able to stand up on its own. <laughs> I do this too. I want to make sure that glue gets really well adhered there. And that is simply, that is the entire pot. Um, it looks differently when it's decorated, but it's really, this is, it's all it is, is sort of a, an open ended box. Okay. The top is one sheet or one cutout that you um, also fold on these score lines here and glue on the on these little edges. So let me show you how to do that. So here is the cutout. Now I folded it on all four, three, four, and you'll see that on each edge here, there's like a little flap that also gets folded, all right? And now we're gonna put a little tiny bit of glue on the inside edge of the first piece. We're holding it down just until it gets a tack. Make sure it's squared off. And then once you know it's, it's connected, then you just work your way around. Pretty straightforward, right? The name of the glue, no, I, okay, so Teresa, no, you cannot buy this at Michael's. Um, I have, at least not in my local Michael's, um, perhaps in other Michael's, maybe. Um, and again, you don't necessarily need to use this glue, but the name of it is called Art Glitter glue art glitter glue it comes in a two ounce this is two ounce and it also comes in larger uh quantity that you can refill that's what i do here is i refill this um and it, it you don't necessarily need this one there's a scotch like a for paper that works well too so if you can't find it michael's just carry that one so there is the top and then simply need to just take the top and just rest it on to the 
pot. Now, you can glue this on if you want to. One of the tricks that I've done when I had these, um, we had like kind of a farmer's market here in downtown. And so I sold some of my paper creations and there was wind. So I had anticipated the wind and I put in a little, you know, those little condiment containers. I filled it up with rice and put the cover on it and then put it in here so that when the wind came along, it didn't knock it over because it does get a little top heavy from the flour. Now, the flour is pretty big and it gets a little top heavy and then a good wind will take that right out. Okay. So you can do that. You can also glue it on the inside. It's up to you what you want to do. But that's the pot, so simple, right? Any questions about the pot, just so that I make sure. So the glue is called Art Glitter Glue. You can buy it on Amazon. Do check the right prices, because I have seen some that are a little overpriced. Someone did give me the name of someone who does sell it out in Utah, but um, I, I haven't, gotten to talk to her yet but she owns a little shop in Utah and um, so when I get that information I can post it on on my page so um, if you if you don't want to buy it from Amazon or you can't find it on create for less right now it's out of stock at create for less and it has been for a couple weeks but you know everything is so up in the air these days you know so um, I'm sure th when things settle down, it will get better. So, um, and again, you don't just have to use this. You can use, um, any of the other good quality paper glue. Okay. So that's the box. Let's talk about the flower head. Okay. So, um, you can cut this out obviously in any color you like. I happen to like this sort of periwinkle blue color. Um, but I also have done it in lavender. I've done it in pink. So here's lavender. Here's some periwinkle and here's some pink. Yeah, I know, Teresa, because you're in Canada. Uh, Teresa's saying she can't order it, and, you know. And yeah, you, you have to wait. And, and again, I, I wouldn't, like, completely say don't do Elmer's. If you have Elmer's, use Elmer's. But what I would not use is, um, like, a glue stick. I wouldn't use it. And I definitely wouldn't use a hot glue gun because uh, hot glue guns are, ugh, the dangerous. <laughs> I just don't like them. Um, so one of the things that is like a little trick, uh, it's something I don't normally do, but I wanted to show is about, uh, is what called inking. Again, this is something that you do not have to do. I think the project looks really good whether or not you do it, but um, it does give you a little bit of like realism to the flowers. Um, and, and so, you know, if you happen to have the, these on, on hand, you can, you can try this out if you'd like. It's, it's sort of, it takes a little fine touch. And the reason why I don't like working with ink is that I'm a, I'm a, rubber stamper from way way back and just I spent way too many years with ink on my fingers and so I kind of have just sort of avoided it um, ever since. So these are um, what's called I call these cat's eyes but they're basically little tiny ink pads and they have they come off and it's got kind of a sponge to it. This is pigment ink um, which means it lasts for a really, really long time. And so you can use these little guys. You can also use the square ones, um, but these ones are really easier to, to do. And I generally will do this on a flat surface. Um, and you probably want to put some uh, paper down. So I'm just taking a coordinating color. So I'm working on this purple flower. So I've got this coordinating uh, cat's eye. And you're, you're going to want to sort of, if you want to ink it, you're going to want to, and it just takes practice, you know. Um, just don't uh, overly ink it, but just to kind of do the edges, it gives them a little bit of depth, okay? 
Um, some people like Mary at SVG Cuts, she loves to ink. She's like, can't stop, won't stop. Personally, I just, I'm not a big inker, but this is how you would do it. And um, it's just kind of thing, again, like with the glue, a little bit, a finger dabber. Oh, okay, uh, Lisa. That's a good idea, a finger dabber. So you use it from a, a larger um, ink pad, maybe. Um, and again, I don't do this that often, but I wanted to show people how to do it. One of the things I will also point out about, and I have this in uh, in pink and purple and, and blue and green. I'm not going to waste a whole lot of time on that, but that's how you do inking, okay? But so each petal that cuts out, and it cuts out 30, did I say 30? I think 30 petals. There, it's a four leaf petal, and it has a hole in the middle, okay? Let me hold it up so you can see, All right? So it's a four leaf petal, the hole in the middle, and you want to give it a little bit, because right now it's flat. So you want to give it a little bit of curl to it, because this is going to be important for when you, um, when you put it on the styrofoam. So what I use is something like this. You can also use a bone folder. You could use um, like a, a letter opener uh, or whatever you want to use. But as long as you can kind of um, pull it against your paper a little bit. So you're going to take each petal holding it very firmly in the middle because you don't want to pull off um, any of the leaves. Okay. Um, okay, so Cynthia's asking, uh, she was looking for the link for the template, couldn't find it. Um, okay, so to, to make the whole project, Cynthia, um, this comes from uh, Dreaming Tree, which is 3dsvg.com. And what you're going to do is go there. You have to purchase this file. This is a purchase file. Um, it's $2.99. Once you purchase it, then you open it up on your on your device, on your laptop or whatever, and you um, you have to unzip it. Sometimes you have to unzip it, and then you can print this part, which is the PDF. Is that what you're talking about? And it's not dreamingtree.com, it's 3D SVG. The name of their company is Dreaming Tree, but I don't think they have the URL dreamingtree.com. I think they go by 3D SVG. Thank you though, Dawn, I appreciate it. Um, okay, so what I'm doing is I'm using, I'm doing it, I'm not even thinking about what I'm doing, but I'm holding the pedal in, in between my index finger and my thumb very firmly because I don't wanna do this and pull off, you know, cause th this could happen, you know, you could end up pulling that off. Don't want to do that. So um, I'm holding it very firmly in the middle. Here we go. Very firmly in the middle with my fingers and then using my right hand, if, if you're a righty, obviously, but I'm um, using your right hand and the sharp edge of this scraper, um, most, People have these scrapers, they come in with everything. <laughs> I think I must have like 20 of them. So, and then I use my thumb, I hold it like this, okay? And I use my thumb and I just sort of drag, see that? I drag the pedal and it gives it sort of a little bit of a curl to it, okay? And it's time consuming, yes. And that's probably another reason why I skip the ink because I don't want to, then I would, do you ink it first? I would ink it first and then, um, and then you have to sort of move through all of these petals and you're talking like 90 petals. And so you just, you know, this is kind of thing where you can cut it out and, and just be sitting at the TV or watching TV and, and be doing this. Sort of like when we do rolled flowers, um, it becomes so sort of something you don't even think about. So once you have all of your leaves done, we're not going to do all of them tonight, but um, 
But once you have all of your leaves done, make a little pile. And if you have them different colors, separate them by the colors, right? And you're gonna take your styrofoam ball, which again, I cut in half using a serrated kitchen knife sort of as best you can go halfway through and so we're cutting it in half like that and again as far as the styrofoam goes it can be this very smooth styrofoam or you can use the kind that looks spongy it doesn't much matter i i don't know how i i got my hands on this one i think i just had it um but you can use either way so once you have all your petals um, either inked or curled and we're going to do the pink one tonight so I'm going to get all my pink petals and I'm going to get my pins okay got to be careful because you will you know prick yourself with these pins these are dressmaker pins again they're you know like a pearl headed pin um, that you find these at any you know dress shop or fabric store or whatever the case may be. Um, you can also buy them online. You're going to need about a hundred for this particular project, which most of these pins come in um, one pack of a hundred. Okay. And that's for all three pots, by the way. So on this, uh, on this half of a styrofoam ball, we are going to cram 30 of these petals. First, we put the with the put the pan in the middle there. That's what that hole is for, right? And then starting at the top here, we're going to put our first one in. Just make sure it gets in there really, really straight and and really good. That's your sort of your your anchor piece. And then I work actually down and then around. And again, you'll do, you know, you'll figure out a better system or easy way for you to do it. But I, I like to put the, the petals really close to each other because I don't want to see any of the white at the end when I'm done. I mean, you might see a tiny bit peeking through and certainly you could, if you wanted to like, um, paint the background of it, if you wanted to, I, I just couldn't be bothered with that. I mean, I'm, I'm all for realism, but you know, sometimes people take it a little too far. Um, so see what I'm doing here is I am pressing that pin in really, really well and very close so that the petals are sticking up and they're touching each other. And so now you can't really see, okay? You can't really see that white in there. So I'm just gonna continue to move all around the um, the the star half of a styrofoam ball until I have it completely covered. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that noise, but uh, Benjamin just decided he was done with with paying attention and he and he went to sit up on the on the uh, couch but I had my reusable shopping bags on here and he's like making all this crunching sound silly silly dog all right so I keep going and again if you you know if you think ah it's not it doesn't look right it's not close enough then you can always take it out and do it again. What you don't want to do is to do that too many times because you'll end up with a lot of holes in your styrofoam. But I'm see as I'm like kind of lifting the the other leaves because I want to make sure they're really packed in there good. This is one of those more is better kind of thing. Sometimes, you know, a subtle hand is nice but you see we're just moving around and at the edges it's okay if it sort of leans over you don't want to again be showing too much of that um, styrofoam ball all right so while I do this I'm going to try to do a giveaway um, let's do 
this. Let's find out who is located the farthest away from me. I live in Peabody, Massachusetts. That's north of Boston by 20 miles. So who lives the farthest away from me? Is there anything else I can use instead of a styrofoam ball? Hmm, not sure. I don't like styrofoam, I will tell you. <laughs> Maria, I am not a big fan of styrofoam and I don't like to have it in my house because it's completely unrecyclable and everything and I really like recyclable things. But have could I use something else? There might be some other things. Um, I don't know. I'd have to go to the store and look. Like, I mean, sometimes they have the green foam. I don't know if that's considered styrofoam, but you could use a green foam with this. Okay, so we've got Florida. Cheryl's in Florida. Lola is in Oakdale, California. Um, Kissimmee, Emmy's in Kissimmee. Oh, Sonoma County, California. Oxford, Michigan, Minnesota, that's farther away. Okay, Ontario, that leaves me out. Oh, it's okay, Cynthia, we'll do something closest to me. Um, Indianapolis, North Carolina, I think it's me. Don, where are you? Are you in, in Ontario? Queens, yeah, you're too close. Michigan, Michigan's a good good distance. Got a lot of Michiganites in tonight. You're going, Carolyn. Carolyn, you're from Massachusetts? Where do you live in Massachusetts? All right, so Omaha, Nebraska. So could someone look at a map for me? We're gonna be honest because, you know, we give away stuff all the time. So um, maybe someone could look at the map and find out New Brunswick. Is that farthest away, Don? South Dartmouth. Oh, that's South Dartmouth, Massachusetts. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know where that is. Oh, awesome. Yeah, you're right. New Brunswick is father. So so I think, Don, that you were right. I think it is you. Well, if we have no other takers, we didn't hear from everybody that's on, but if we have no other takers, then I think Don is our winner for tonight, our giveaway winner. Dawn, I think you might have won before. So if you have, you probably have my email address. It is Miss Rita to the rescue at gmail.com. And what I need for you to do as the winner to send me your name and address so that I can send you the prize. Now, normally, let me tell you a little bit about our giveaways, okay? Um, because people always do ask. Yay, Dawn. Yes. Oh, yes. Yay, Dawn. Yes, yes, yes. So um, let me tell you a little bit about the giveaways. Every month I do giveaways. Um, I give away basically $500 worth of Cricut uh, products. And I have a choice how I want to give that away. I can choose to do it all in one swoop. But I kind of don't like to do that because I love it having as many winners as I can. I have a hard time saying no to people. <laughs> people know that. Um, so I, what I do is I usually come up with a giveaway for each month and it's usually focused around a theme. This month it's infusible ink. And so it's a $50 prize worth $50. And I, and I gave away 10 of those, but, um, sometimes I run through all of that all of that uh, money, which I have done already, but I wanted to do another giveaway. So normally those prizes come from Cricut and um, it takes a couple of weeks when you win. So if you are the future winner of something or if you've ever won from me, um, uh, then you know, uh, you know that I just like to share, you know, I mean, I just think, I don't know. I just think it's just fun to win something. Uh, I just remember being a kid and never winning stuff and just feeling like, you know, even if I just got a little tiny trophy or a prize or something, it would make me feel good. So, um, that's kind of my philosophy. It's like, you're, you're here, you're participating. You should be, um, 
eligible to win something. So if you are interested in winning things, hang around because we just do these things all the time. Um, and I try to swap it up. Like I think the last time we did a giveaway a couple of days ago, we, um, we did trivia on Peabody, my, my city, the city of Peabody, because, um, I was talking about how, uh, how we we name the name of it is uh is actually spelled Peabody and that's the way most everybody wants to pronounce it outside of the city but everybody pronounces it Peabody and it was named after a man a, a uh famous philanthropist named George Peabody um and I'm pretty sure that he pronounced his name Peabody anyway so we did like local history trivia people were remarkably good at it um I don't know maybe they used Wikipedia or something I don't know but we um and then we had a conversation about Salem because the city of Salem is right next to Peabody it was fun <laughs> Uh, George Peabody, that's right. I have a hard time saying no. I do have a hard time saying no. So, um, so for this month, since I already gave away all of my April prizes, th this prize, Dawn, and two prizes, I think one, Teresa's win a, one of those, is it like, a, what, a Missy, I think was the other one um, from the other night, is winning basically a bonus. So that will ship from my house. Um, and sadly, we are, we are in the middle of the coronavirus, so I am hoping to get it out, let's say Saturday, hopefully by Tuesday, um, Dawn. But you have to email me so that I have the correct address to send it to, okay? Peabody is near Salem. Yeah. Oh, are you guys, are you guys, um, did you visit here? Did you visit Paula? Um, it, it's really a fun place to visit, especially in the summertime. Sadly, nobody's doing any traveling now. And, but Peabody is really more like a bedroom community or I don't know. It's sort of a cross between bedroom and like a commerce place. Um, it's really an interesting city. It has got a lot of history to it. Uh, and, but a lot of people, they, they go Salem and they all know what Salem is, but they don't necessarily know where Peabody is. So anyway, I talk too much. Um, okay. So we're done. I did all of those 30 pins with the petals there. And it's okay if there's movement there, as long as they're not falling out, you know, yeah, it's hydra it's a hydrangea tray. Oh, you came at Halloween. Oh, well, isn't that a fun thing? Oh, Halloween, yes. We we here tend to avoid um avoid Salem during the month of October. And I live uh here on right on the road that takes you to Salem. Um and it just oh gets crazy crazy busy with traffic um did you note that i put a whole lot of glue which normally i don't put a lot of glue stop 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 saying what that i talk too much <laughs> okay so so i took the um took the green i'm talking because see that's what i mean i'm not explaining myself so this is the green piece that goes underneath the flower i think it's actually pretty pretty um true to the to the to the look of it and i'm also using my my scraper or my bone fold or whatever you're going to use and just giving it a little bit of a and so it's not flat you know it's a little bit you know you can make one be more than the other it's up to you whatever you want to do and then i i put a lot of glue this is the only time i tell you to put a lot of glue because gluing to styrofoam is difficult and you're going to have to um, make sure it really gets a hold there but once it does the final part is Let's take our box, right? Okay. 
And then we're just going to place it here. We don't need as, hi, who's saying hi, Miss Rita? Sydney, there's my friend Sydney. My friend Sydney from Bour Bourbonnais. Bourbonnais, is that right, Sydney? Bour Bourbonnais, Illinois, am I right? So now I'm just gonna hold this here. Oh. Oh, thank you, Emmy. You know, you know, the thing is, um, I used to talk for a living <laughs> um, uh, before, like before I, I became a mom and um, I would get tired of hearing myself talk. And now when I get to do these videos, I get to talk and, um, but, but since I've been a mom, I don't get a chance to have like, you know, face-to-face -face interactions with a whole lot of people. Um, so for me, I feel like it's a lot of energy expended for, <laughs> for the hour. All right. And so you're going to, obviously you're going to be a little more patient with it, but, um, I just, it's just simply glue. And again, you could, if you want, you could put something inside. Like I said, I put rice inside of mine, inside of a condiment. You know those little condiment things that you can get like ketchup or whatever inside or dressing? I put, um, I just saved one from, from a salad and then I, I just filled it up with uh, rice. I think I did rice. You could probably put beans or something. And I just, it fit perfectly in the bottom. And then I could put the top on and when I was outside, the wind would come along and it still stayed up. And uh, it was really kind of a little, little trick, a little trick of the eyes. Thank you, Dawn. Um, okay, so is this a Cricut Joy project? Part of this project can be done on a Joy. Um, the part, actually all of this project technically could be done on a joy however you would need to make modifications because of size size is the biggest limitation um for outside designers svgs okay but um so so for instance all of these flowers could be done this could probably be done um and these panel pieces could be done but the big pieces the piece that you make the pot out of and the piece that you make the tray out of um probably would not fit I have to check the measurements. Now I have done videos where I've shown you how to modify files so that it will work on the joy. And believe it or not, it's actually easier to do that with an outside designer SVG because um, the Cricut designers, the Cricut, you know, made for Cricut design space files, usually um, have things such as scoring using the stylus or the scoring wheel and those are not things you can do on the joy that all being said the size of the foam ball is three inches and yes the glue is called art glitter glue um, that all being said for whoever asked me um, and it's not difficult Lola no um, so let's see who was asking me about the cricket joy, Patricia. So that all being said, Patricia, um, I will never discriminate against one machine towards another. Uh, I love all of the machines. And so, um, so what I've been doing since joy launched is sort of vacillating between, um, joy projects and, uh, and, maker or explore projects and when I can I try to give you alternates to um to do projects uh sometimes there are just going to be projects that the joy cannot do um but always probably the projects um with the exception of the Cricut joy cards those the the you know the insert cards um those those can't be done on anything but a joy, but um, pretty much the maker, the explorer can do just about everything. The joy has a little more limited, but what you give up for um, features, you gain in per, uh, you know portability. So that that's sort of the trade off for the joy. That all being said, I don't ever. Um, I love all of my machines, and so I am. 
uh, constantly using all of them. And uh, as we go forward through this, you know, a social distancing uh, experiment, um, you will find on during the week, I'll be doing joy projects one day and maybe a maker project the next day, uh, maybe an iron on project the next day. So I try to balance it off. You know what I mean? Um, and yes, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. And, and, you know, and the thing is, it's a beautiful machine, the Joy. It is a really wonderful machine. I love it. I fell in love with it. I honestly didn't think I was going to fall in love with it when we were flown out to Utah. Um, I was like, I hope it's not another machine. Just because, you know, it's like usually when you get a new machine, you have to like learn lots of new things. And I was like, kind of not in a mood for a new machine. But um, so they were all asking, what do you think it is? What do you think it is? And they, ha they held up a, uh, like a, like a tote bag. And they said, it fits in this tote bag. So we're all like, oh, it can't be a machine. Right. Um, and, and lo and behold, the joy came out and like, at first I was like, oh, and then they started demoing it. And I was like, oh, oh, okay, all right, you know, and just kind of, and then, then we had to wait several weeks before it got launched to get our, our version, um, and it was like torture, and it's not talking about it, because every single, single project I did, I was like, I could do this on the job. <laughs> I wonder if I could do this on the joy, you know, and, and, uh, so, and they had like a special version of design space and everything too. And so, um, Oh, the makeup bag. Yeah. You know, I was look. I was on Amazon this morning looking for some blanks to do. Um, and I saw some like dish, like tea towels. So I was thinking, Oh, maybe I'll get those. And, and, do some tea towels because I'd love to have like a decorated tea towel in the kitchen. Um, but yeah, I like the little makeup bag too. But I mean, none of us are going out. So it's like, you know, why make something for travel that you can't even use? <laughs> and Lisa, you know, the, the, the cards are beautiful. Lisa says she bought the joy for the cards. And um, I don't blame you. The, the cards are just beautiful. And one day, Sydney can attest to this, I think. Uh, one day we counted how many cards that they had available. And it was like over 150. And that was a month ago. So, and they keep adding more. So, plus... You can make your own. And I don't know if you guys know that. And we're going to do another demo for just specifically for Mother's Day. Um, I th I'm going to try to squeeze that in this week where you can make your own Cricut Joy insert cards. Okay. Um, and you can use all of your Cricut uh, images. Yeah, we we'll definitely do that. Um, it's so much fun. Once I figured it out, I will tell you, you know, it was a little bit nerve wracking when I was trying to figure it out. Cause I'm like, how did they do this? Oh man. And it was just really kind of, you know, I was up, I was up one night thinking, I'm like, how do, how do I, you know, maybe if I do this and, and the problem is like, usually what I do is I, I find a project that I like and then I modify it. I love to do that. And, um, you can't do that with the joy cards. You can't like just kind of grab it and and look at it, modify it, make changes and that that I think is the one downfall of the of the joy is that you can't modify the files. But um so so I was constantly like trying to figure out maybe this will work, maybe this will work. Uh, seriously, I did it for like 3 weeks and, and then finally it was like light dawns on Marblehead and and I got it and I'm like I got to show everybody this. It's so easy too. Um Yep, rolled flowers, by the way, rolled flowers can be made on the joy very easily um and uh, where is this flower at and the name of it? Okay. So Jennifer, this is from an outside designer called dreaming tree and you can find them at 3dsvg.com. It's called the hydrangea tray SVG. 
There is a cost involved. It's $2.99. I do have another alternative hydrangea um, petal that I can uh, post the link to it. It's a Cricut Design Space image. It's similar, but not exactly the same. Doesn't have the hole in the middle. But if you if you don't want to spend the $3 to buy this SVG and you just kind of want to do something with um, hydrangea petals, I can post that link, okay? Um, and I've actually used that to make, I call them hydrangea balls. It's, it's a full styrofoam. And then I put a piece of ribbon in the middle and, and you can hang it like on a Christmas tree or, you know, on a, a bookshelf or kind of something like that. So, um, will you do lives on doing engraving on the maker? Um, I can do that. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so if you're, if you're really new to Cricut, the maker is a top of the line machine. Okay. It's, it has all the bells and whistles. It cuts fabric, it cuts wood, it cuts thick, thick, like chipboard cardstock type of thing. Um, and it has what's called an adaptive, adaptive tool system and um we've done things like the scoring wheel and i've also done the there's a perforation blade i've done that um and i'm happy to do the engraving as well um i have to find more engraving blanks because right now the only engraving blanks that i have are these sheets of aluminum that you get from from cricut because they they haven't added a whole lot of, of blanks for some reason. I think they will probably in the future. Um, but they have all these adaptive tools and they're really cool. I mean, not everything is for everyone, but I'm happy to, um, to demonstrate anything. So if there's something you've always just been curious about, whatever, the scoring stylus or the deep cut blade or, you know, uh, I don't know. Do you want to talk about mats? Um, just send me a message or let me know and I will fit it into the calendar somehow and um, and let you know all about that that topic. I'm happy to share that knowledge. And, and that's what this is all about is that, you know, we're creative people helping each other be more creative. And I love that. Um, and I'm happy to do that, Dawn. Okay. So, um, so, so I guess, oh, a puzzle, Dawn, so do I, um, there was an employee at Cricket, her name, Carly, uh, Carly Hall, she has, I think she's, she's just like a YouTuber now, and she made, she has a cutest dog named Poppy, a uh, little black dog, and she made a basswood, I think it was basswood photo puzzle in the shape of a heart and I was like I must make that for my teddy bear um but I never finished it I remember uh because it cut through my mat and I still have that mat because I can see the heart shape and it like I kind of sliced through the mat and I never got to finish it but um but let's do that let's make that a, a topic um sometime is is how to cut um, basswood. It takes a little longer with the maker to do that. Now for all the folks that have Explores, the Explore is a fabulous machine. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Um, the maker does some of the really, you know, really kind of what I would call esoteric type of things or, or the real specialty uh, fabrics or specialty materials but the but the explore is a workhorse and it just will cut and cut and cut and cut and it's fast um especially the air too it's super fast so see what i mean they each machine has its its relative merit so when you're if you haven't purchased a machine yet and you're trying to decide which one um you got to think about how you know and stretch your mind how am i going to use this machine like do i plan on 
cutting fabric and making quilts? Um, or do I just want to cut vinyl or paper? Um, and is portability an issue for me? Or do I have a big space that I want to use and, and can really spread out? So you have to ask those kinds of questions and before you go in, in by the machine. Um, or, you know, you might have some, you know, feeling hesitations like, oh, gee, I, I wish I had known I would have gotten the maker. But to be honest, any machine is a good machine when it comes to Cricut. So, so um, you can, there's all kinds of tricks that you can trick them out and make them do what you need them to do. And there are some pretty creative people out there that will um, be happy to show you how to do all those kinds of things as well. So, okay. All right. Love you, maker. Okay. So here we go. Let me just see. I want to make my fur. Oh, the dog tags. I want to do that too. Carolyn, I'm going on Amazon tomorrow looking for, because I did look for that with the dog tags. I did look for the blanks and I remember now things are kind of slow with shipping. I don't know if you guys know that, uh, experienced that, but like, um, things I used to get things I'd order from Amazon. I swear they were like on the street corner, just delivering the things <laughs> like the second I ordered it. Now they've, they've slowed up a bit and can things that normally I'd get in a day or two taking like, um, a week, but I'm going to go on Amazon uh, tomorrow and find some blank dog tags. And we're going to do that for a project. We're going to make like ID, like dog tags, basically. Um, because my son would absolutely adore that a as a project and, and we can do that. And that, that adaptive tool, um, the engraving tool does do that and it does a great job. So let's do that. Okay. Um, so, and Jenny, in terms of if you have the Air 2, the Air 2 does great stuff. So don't be like, oh, I only have the Air 2. You know, it's, it's an awesome machine. Um, and I have, like I said, I have them all. And, um, you know, I, I just think unless you, unless you really want to be like, I want to cut leather or I want to, um, cut felt. Felt is really good on the maker. I will admit. And I've done felt, um, a lot of really fun felt projects like felt flowers, uh, leather. It cuts leather beautifully. Um, and just, so if you want to make earrings or something like that with leather, that's something, if you want to see that, I can show you that too. So, um, so there's that print and cut also a very good, um, also a very good, uh, idea. Print and cut is, is sort of mysterious. I think a lot of people don't understand how easy and fun it is. And, uh, what print and cut is, and, and this is something you cannot do on the joy. Okay. Um, so, but print and cut uses your, it's a separate, it uses your separate printer and you print to that printer then you take it, it, it prints off from, you know, from Cricut Design Space with a black box around it. Then you take the printout. So, um, like it can be anything. It could be a photo, um, or it could be like a, a drawing that's flattened. And then you take the, the printout and you put it on a Cricut mat and you put it into your machine and there's a sensor that's in the Explore machine and also in the in the Maker machine that it senses the cut lines and it will cut all around your picture or your whatever your object is. It's amazing. It's a lot of fun. And um, one of my other uh, designer friend, Laurie Whitlock, make some fabulous, fabulous, um, projects with print and cut. Anna Griffin does a lot of print and cut, um, both cards and, uh, like sentiments for the cards. Just great idea. Print and cut is a great idea to talk about. Um, okay. Okay. Thanks everybody for coming. Unless there are, um, I just purchased an Oh, Jenny, you got to get that out of the box because the only thing bad about having a cricket is not using it. 
<laughs> uh, okay, so if there are no other questions, remember you can always reach me on Facebook Messenger. Um, or if if not there, through there, you can send me an email, uh, misreaded to the rescue at gmail.com. If you're not already subscribing um, to my YouTube channel, consider doing that because uh, all of the videos that I do, even all these live ones, they get put on to YouTube and it's super easy to find all the different ones. And I do put very detailed descriptions in there so that, you know, if you're looking for something very specific, like I want to know how to use infusible ink pens on the joy, I have a video for that, you know, or I want to know how to, um, print and cut. I, I don't think I've actually don't have a print the cut but you know I want to do the perforation blade for you know for the maker I have a video for that I want to make an oversized flower I have a video for that you know so so um if being on YouTube and and subscribing to that channel doesn't cost you anything um so just subscribe and and you can go through I think there's like 300 videos on there and yeah some of them are kind of cheesy quality because that's when I was first getting started but um but uh you know the information is there uh and uh, we did like, for instance, cake toppers. That's something you could do on the Joy. Uh, what else did we do? Holographic iron-on, infusible ink. That's very popular, both the pen and the transfer sheets. Um, and the Joy can do infusible ink. Uh, or pen work, or knowing when to change your blade. All of those videos are available um, on my YouTube channel and you can uh, search through them there and find whatever it is you need to know or just reach out to me, to the rescue at gmail.com. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for joining me. It's nice to have something to do on a Saturday night. I'm so happy that you could join me. Um, I hope that you'll consider joining me during the week. Uh, if you have the time. So we're going to continue on with those those live video uh, chats, the coffee coffee and cricket chats on during the week at nine o'clock um, on my channel, Miss Rita's to the Rescue, and then I'll rebroadcast it um, on, on my page and in the groups. And uh, let's see, we're going to continue to do that until we're not all until the pandemic is done, you know, until we are all back to work at least, you know, so, so let's have some fun while we're here. Okay. Um, thank you. I hope you all stay safe and really enjoy your weekend and, um, and just have a great night. Okay. Good night, everyone. <laughs>